The production of industrial chemicals is crucial to our modern economy. To produce products ranging from fertilisers, explosives and plastics, to more consumer or household products such as soaps and detergents. When manufacturing chemicals on an industrial scale like this, the logistics for efficient manufacture are incredibly complex to produce tonnes of a product in every batch. This includes compounds such as zeolite, found in nearly all household washing powders. Zeolite is, uh, has the same components in it than a lot of, lot of clays do. It has uh, sodium, aluminium and silicon, and the choice of the amounts of those uh, individual materials tells you which zeolite you make. There are actually probably a hundred zeolites uh, in existence of different formulations. We make one called zeolite A, which is the, the, uh, a very big component in the washing uh, powders that are used for laundry detergents. Zeolite is used in washing powders due to its water softening characteristics. The compound structure has large holes within that capture and contain calcium and magnesium found in our water supply, therefore softening the water and making the washing process more efficient. But just how is this complex compound actually made? When making zeolite, we may need to mix together two raw materials, sodium aluminate and sodium silicate, to make sodium aluminosilicate, which is zeolite. Now, the sodium aluminate and sodium silicate, we actually make ourselves on site. We start with sand and caustic soda to make sodium silicate, and another mineral, aluminium hydroxide and caustic soda, to make sodium aluminate. And when we mix those two together, they form what's called a gel, which then crystallizes out and to give a very nice fine powder, which is zeolite A. But it's not as straightforward as simply mixing all of these reactants together in a vessel. When produced on such a large scale, the reaction must be monitored and controlled thoroughly. So when making the zeolite to the right formulation, it's important to get the correct ratios of the sodium, the aluminium and the silicon. Otherwise, you actually make a different structured zeolite which has different properties. So we have to be very careful how we make the sodium aluminate and the sodium silicate to begin with. And then we have to very carefully mix them in the right ratios with the right um, alkalinity in the mixture and then give the material the right conditions to crystallize. So we have to hold it at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time to get exactly the right product we want. The temperature required is 85 degrees centigrade. And as well as this temperature, the timing of the reaction needs to be monitored as well as the reaction will need about an hour for the correct crystals to form. But these crystals aren't the final product. Well, we make the zeolite in very large reactor vessels. So we have something like 80 tonnes of the total reaction, of which 20 tonnes is the zeolite that we want. So we have to extract that from the large reaction slurry, which we do using something called a filter press. This uh, squeezes, basically squeezes the water away from the powder, which is then passed to a large dryer, uh, is dried to get rid of the residual water, and then we uh, make sure that it's the right, has the right characteristics for the customer. And we do that obviously with quality control testing in the lab, where we look at the color of the material, how well it, uh, it absorbs calcium, and some other parameters. So an immense amount of equipment, control, monitoring and testing is required to make just one of the millions of chemicals needed by industry today.